Hello, and welcome to Lesson 6, Developing Subharmonics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get better at subharmonics using a healthy and natural approach. Let's get started. When developing subharmonics, there are four things I'd like to take a look at. Our range, whether it's low, mid, or high. The quality of the subharmonic. Is it dark, bright, or a combination of the two? The speed, whether it's our transition, stability, as well as the stamina. And in order to develop stamina, of course, we focus on staccato and legato energy to help us sustain that line as well as break up the line. You may have noticed that your range of subharmonic gravitated toward a certain area, whether it's the really low subs between C1 and F1, the low to mid subs between G1 and C2, mid to high, which is between D2 and G2, as well as the high subs between A2 and D3. Now, your range might be slightly different based on your voice type. Generally, this area, low subs, low mid, mid high, and high, tend to be around this area, give or take a few notes. Any lower than C1 feels pulse-like, and any higher than D2 feels like a distortion. As stated in my other videos, here are some general characteristics that you typically have in these areas. Once you've established your range, let's focus on some quality. For me personally, I like starting with octave slides to really, really sweep through the range and as well focus on dark and bright sounds. Using the octave slide, I like going from E to E to really sweep through my comfortable range of subharmonic, like so. Using an A vowel. Now, the great thing about doing octave slides is that you really get an idea of where those bumps in the road are. You'll notice that it gets harder to maintain that sub like quality as you get higher, and it gets as well as you get lower, you have to really, really be careful on how your vowels work. So I like using the A vowel because it's balanced between dark and bright. You can use the E vowel to get a brighter sound and really, really zone in on those upper partials, or use a darker O or even O sound to really focus on the fundamental and first few harmonics. Speed has always been interesting for me because it can be an amazing feeling as well as a train wreck based on where you are. So for the most part, you want to be able to do this exercise at a tempo that's comfortable for you. I highly recommend starting very slow and focusing on the vowel sounds. Personally, I like using the N to allow the vowel and the subharmonic to just kind of glue itself together before I even begin uh, on the vowel sound. We'll start on G, which is actually pretty high for me for subharmonics, but for this example, we'll give it a shot. Let's find a comfortable tempo. Right here. One, two, ready, and. Ni, ne, na. Ni, ne, na. I recommend starting at a slower tempo or sometimes maybe even a faster tempo to work on that transition, that speed. You can use nu, no, na to work on darker vowels. I like using ni, ne, na, the higher, brighter vowels to really zone in on those high subharmonics. Move it up or down a half step as needed. Stamina. Working on stamina is very, very healthy and great for subharmonics. I like using bum, bum, bum because it allows you to engage in that staccato feel while maintaining the legato line. So we're gonna work on both of those concepts into one to build our stamina. Here's a prior example that shows this exercise for you. So one more time. Finally, music. Find a line of music that you really enjoy, or a song that you really enjoy singing to, that you can use subharmonics on. 
find music that allows you to showcase and work on all four of the ideas of subharmonics, whether it's range, quality, speed, and or stamina. A line of music that allows me to work on those four things is In the Cellar Deep. For this piece, we'll start slow and then we'll go fast. Im tief in the Keller sitz ich hier bei einem was voller Reben. And now, faster. Im tiefen Keller sitz ich hier bei einem was voller Reben. Now, the idea is simply to make sure you are able to engage in the subharmonic. If you miss a few here and there, that's okay. I recommend using ya, ya, ya. Ya, 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 ya. It allows you to really focus on that subharmonic as opposed to changing the consonant and the vowel. That takes a little bit more time. Some of you can achieve that immediately. Others of you just need a little bit more time to focus on zoning in on that subharmonic. Use yaw to your advantage. And that is that. Lesson 6 is in the bag. Thank you so much for your time. Please feel free to comment, question below, and subscribe as well. Check out base2yang.com when you get a chance. We'll see you next time.